Hello everyone, my name is Chris and today we will be discussing what 5 Fallout characters are most likely to appear in the TV show based on lore and what we've seen from the show so far. I've decided to go with 5 so the video doesn't go on forever, because if we have to be honest, there are potentially hundreds of characters that can make an appearance. We will go through each one while briefly explaining the lore behind them and how they can fit in the grand scheme of things. Please keep in mind that while this is a top 5 list, any of these characters can be placed in any given order. And now without wasting any more time, let's jump right into it. Number 5. Desmond Lockhart Yes, the infamous ghoul we got to interact with all the way back in the Point Lookout DLC for Fallout 3. Desmond is a 250 year old man, similar to Cooper Howard, who, unlike Cooper, actually became a ghoul on purpose before the Great War even started. Why did he do this? Well, I guess you could say he really liked the idea of being immortal. What makes Desmond and his story so interesting is that both him and his peers knew that the Great War was inevitable, which puts him in the same category as characters like Mr. House and all of these corporate schmucks. And also, much like them, it is entirely possible that he had a direct involvement in the actions leading up to the nukes falling. If you're a follower of Oxform here on YouTube, You've probably already figured out why I think this character might appear on the show. But for those who don't, I will explain this briefly and also link his video down in the description. Ok, in episode 8 of season 1, we hear this mini robo brain from Vault 31, who looks like a Roma by the way, briefly talk about the great game and the key to the future of humanity. The great game of the... the <laughs> alright, alright. As you might expect, Desmond Lockhart happens to be a player in this said game. When facing the nuclear holocaust, global leaders and members of the intelligence community made their personal bid for surviving in this new world. Among these were the FEV virus, cryogenical stasis, genetic cloning, Gary. putting your brain in a jar and, as mentioned before, controlled exposure to radiation. Old pre-war rivalries, ideologies and even personal vendettas were not forgotten when the society collapsed and those like Desmond, Mr. House and vault quickly set about doing what the bombs couldn't, wiping out any remnants of the old world that may be a threat to their personal and political agendas. So yeah, this is quite a long game they're playing, but as Desmond put it, there are not that many players left standing. There are only a few of us left now. The great game goes on. So basically, the reason I think it's possible for him to appear in the show is that so much of it leans on the pre-war world. The great game was straight up mentioned and a few players were introduced, or teased. So if they do go this route, it may be pretty interesting. Number 4. Arthur Maxon Arthur is the elder of the East Coast Brotherhood of Steel and also the last living descendant of Roger Maxon, the founder of the Brotherhood. As you may know, we've seen Arthur during two different points in his life so far. Once in Fallout 3, where he is merely a 10 year old squire serving under El Alliance at the Citadel. And the second time in Fallout 4, 10 years later, as the now established 20 year old Elder of the Brotherhood. I point out his age for a reason, but we'll get to that. Let me start with the importance of his lineage first. It may be a very minor detail, but I wish to point out that his mother sent Arthur East with Lions in part because of the internal conflict the Western Brotherhood faced at the time. Maxon's name means a lot to the Brotherhood, which would have created a very unsafe environment for Arthur due to the possible power struggle that would ensue. Even in the show we see how Maximus is being offered to join a sort of rebellion or I guess you could say internal revolution in the faction. The Brotherhood has lost its way. We once ruled the wasteland. And yet power is taken, not given. This possible development in season 2 would turn Maximus and his chapter into a threat for Arthur and the rest of the Brotherhood, from which many see Arthur as an almost godlike figure. Some even go as far as stating that his soul is forged from eternal steel. So this premise alone seems to point out that Maximus' storyline could eventually introduce us to Arthur as a now 30 year old hardened veteran, which also fits in well with how we see him every 10 years or so. Much like how we get a new Fallout game every 10 years, you know, if we're lucky. Anyway, the other reason I think it's highly likely we see him is because of the prison's appearance in season 1. This ship's presence heavily implies that either the Brotherhood or the Minutemen ending is now canon for Fallout 4. In both cases, it would mean Arthur survived and is more than likely still kicking. And also, I'd like to point out this one line from Dance in Fallout 4. 
Why did the Brotherhood send it here? We call our ship the Pridwin. She's loaded with enough troops and supplies to mount a major offensive. If she's here, Elder Maxon's here. And that means we're going to war. Well, one can hope. The story can only benefit if they include him in some way, shape or form. It's clear that the Brotherhood will be faced with both internal and external threats in the face of the Enclave, vault and possibly the NCR remnants. We already know that the Brotherhood story and lore will be touched greatly in the show. So they might as well include this iconic character in order to drive the drama forward, for better or worse. Number 3. Marcus Marcus, just like Arthur, has also appeared in two Fallout titles so far. Once in Fallout 2 as the elderly super mutant sheriff of Broken Hills and a second time in Fallout New Vegas as the now mayor of Jacobstown. What makes him a rather interesting character is his firm belief in the Master's plan, which was to turn humans into super mutants. They truly thought that by doing this, it would elevate humanity out of the vicious cycle of war, and in essence, that by having a single race of people, things would finally settle down. But that plan quickly fell apart after the unit's destruction in Fallout 1 by the game's protagonist. Marcus would be a great character to introduce on the show, simply due to how much he's seen in his lifetime. He went from being involved in the Unity plan in Fallout 1, to then helping the Chosen One defeat the Enclave in Fallout 2 and later finally ending up in New Vegas. Meeting quite a few iconic characters along the way such as the Master, the Courier and Frank Horrigan. Just seeing a short flashback of his life would please millions of fans if done right. On top of that, I think it's high time we get a super mutant character on the show. And I can think of only a few better options than Marcus. One of which is Dog and God, but that'll be before the end of the Dead Money DLC. Right now, Marcus should still be in Jacobstown, close enough to New Vegas, so beating him wouldn't be too much of a stretch, as he wasn't heavily involved in the plot of New Vegas. I realize meeting him is much more wishful thinking than anything else, but still, he would be a great character to have just for the sake of world building and pleasing a few fans. But what do you think? Would you like to see Marcus or another classic Fallout character like this? Number 2. Victor I have a lot of fond memories of this character, mostly while watching him slowly dig out the courier in the Fallout New Vegas teaser. And I do mean slowly. Seriously, I have no idea how the courier didn't get at least one piece of dialogue describing how much he hates sand after this experience. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. Victor is a Robco security robot, model 26B. And yes, I realize I sound like a manual. Anyway, at the start of New Vegas, he had spent around 15 years chilling over at Good Springs, which is where the courier eventually got shot by Chandler. While Victor is best known for his tomb raiding and stalking capabilities, he actually plays a slightly bigger role in the overall plot. When the platinum chip was finally located in the ruins of Sunnyvale, Victor was the one tasked with arranging its safe return to the Lucky 38. In other words, he was the one that hired the courier in the first place. With all of these small details out of the way, how could Victor fit into the future of Fallout and the show in particular? You know, aside from simply being located in New Vegas. Well, while he may not play a significant part in the overall plot of the show, he could serve as character development for the goo. As it is all but confirmed that his face was modeled after Cooper Howard's cowboy character that he plays in those scenes before the war. We've already seen the Goo's reaction when he saw himself in the old movie, so now imagine if he had to straight up interact with his former face and character. That would make for some really interesting drama and character interactions. And the showrunners would be foolish to miss this opportunity, at least in my opinion. But what do you think? Would you like to see Victor and would it be weird for him to be wearing Cooper Howard's face? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Number 1. Mr. House Mr. Robert Edwin House, also known as Mr. House, is the enigmatic ruler of New Vegas and the founder of Robco Industries. As a fun fact, he also attended the Commonwealth Institute of Technology, which was featured heavily in Fallout 4. I honestly think that us seeing Mr. House again is one of the safest bets we can make. Given how he already had a cameo in Season 1 and also happens to be the head of New Vegas, which is where Season 2 would take place, I would honestly be shocked if we don't at the very least get another cameo. On top of that, he can also be considered a player in the great game as we mentioned before. 
House devoted a huge chunk of his resources and time to ensure that both him and the city of Las Vegas would survive the apocalypse. His method involved him placing his physical body within a life support device and wiring his brain directly into a vast information network which happened through an enormous supercomputer. The before mentioned platinum chip actually carried a vital OS upgrade for his robots and defense networks, which is basically what the Fallout New Vegas story revolved around. Sadly, the chip did not reach health before the bombs fell and hence he could not protect Vegas entirely. Still, Vegas is in much better condition than most cities we've seen in the universe, although that shot at the very end of season 1 does have a lot of people concerned. But I for one am not. Even in the last shot we can see there is clearly life surrounding the city, so I don't really see what the big fuss is about. Could something have happened to make the conditions over at New Vegas worse? Well, of course. But I honestly don't think it's all gone. And yeah, even if Vegas isn't completely gone, there is still a chance for Mr. House to be queued off screen before the events of the show even take place. But once more, that seems like such a waste of a great character. And this is all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like and subscribe for more content. And also, please tell me what characters you think we can see in future seasons of Fallout or in the video games. In the meantime, if you're interested, we have plenty of other Fallout content you may enjoy. Thank you for watching and have a good one.